Hello my good YouTubers. Um, I actually wanted to do a video today, um, Sunday the 14th November. I actually wanted to do a video today about the e-cigarette and its cigarette high. Uh, obviously you, it seems that a lot of people are reporting that you don't get the high, like the nicotine rush as such, that uh, you normally get with a normal cigarette. Well, you don't actually get that with an e-cigarette. Um, I believe that that is true. You don't actually get that cigarette high um, with an e-cigarette. Um, I've got some... How can I put it? Some theories as to why you don't get that high. And I believe the reason you actually don't get that high is because, in obviously, inside a normal cigarette you've got certain particular poisonous chemicals, um, to name a few, benzene, formaldehyde, uh, ammonia, acetone, um, tar, which is obviously, as I say, that's not, uh, you know, I don't think that's got anything to do with it, um, nicotine, carbon monoxide, uh, certain others like arsenics, hydrogen cyanide, etc, etc. Now these are very poisonous uh, chemicals, gases, you know, w whatever form they're, you know, they're in, they're still very poisonous. Acetone is one of the sort of, how can we put it, drug abuse liquids. It's, you know, kind of, you know, if you sniff that stuff, it's, you know, it's just a bit like sniffing gas, and very much like benzene or whatever. Is it? Again, it's another, uh, it causes a high it's a chemical that affects the brain, gives you brain damage in a way. It's very much kind of the same as what alcohol does. It's toxin to the system, you know, poisonous, it affects the brain. Obviously in an e-cigarette you're not smoking benzene, acetone, you know, all these sort of ammonia and, you know, um, whatever other stuff. That is. That's one of the major things is not carbon monoxide because you're not actually burning anything, so you're not uh, giving off any carbon monoxide. Uh, now, obviously, carbon monoxide, as I say, is again, it's a poison. It, you know, can restrict the flow of oxygen to the brain. Obviously, make you feel nausea. You know, to the point you even pass out and you know, possibly even die. These, you know, the things that are inside a cigarette, which are incredibly dangerous. But yeah, you smoke those. So, in a high, in a sense of giving you a cigarette high. A normal cigarette's giving you these poisonous, dangerous gases that are going to, in a way, make you feel high because, you know, they're, they're, they're toxic and they're going to, you know, kill you in a sense if you have too much of them. Uh, and eventually will kill you. It's a slow death. I mean, normal, normal tobacco smoking is a slow death and it's, you know, a dirty habit, it's certainly a, you know, um, a killer. It's it, it really is a killer. Um, something I've come to realise, say, after 20 years of smoking, and it sort of affecting my health in the way that it has done, I'm just glad that um, we've got this, this just amazing product, the e-cigarette. It seriously is a lifesaver, and I think it's going to save a tremendously large amount of people's lives when it comes to it. But this is not a give-up smoking aid. I seriously don't... I wouldn't advise anybody, if they wanted to give up smoking, to do... You know, go on to this. This is a, a healthier alternative to cigarettes. These should be put on the shelf. As far as I'm concerned, it should be put on the self, shelf... Shelf. <laughs> put on the shelf alongside normal cigarettes. So you have the choice to go the death, full-on kill death by cigarette route, or you have the um, side route of smoking via a vaporization device, which is this. I don't believe it to be a, a drug delivery device, as people are calling it. A drug delivery device is something like a syringe or an intravenous drip, something like that they use in a hospital. This is not a something you would use in a hospital to deliver drugs. It seriously is not a drug delivery device. Um, it's certainly a recreational device. It's something that people can use at home and, and stuff like that and actually enjoy 
you know, vaping flavors, it's, you know, just like chewing or like drinking something out of a cup. For instance, it's uh, used on a, um, a comment box on somebody's YouTube video uh, when they called it a drug delivery device. They says, well, you know, if I take some Lemsip, uh, cold and flu, I drop that into a cup, I, you know, make up a cold and Lemsip, you know, whatever, with some warm water. I then drink that. Does that make the cup a drug delivery device? Well, in a sense, I suppose it does. But we, you know, not going to categorize you know, a mug or a cup as the same as we would classify a syringe or an intravenous drip. It's, you know, we just wouldn't. <laughs> so this is in exactly in that sense. It's, it's, it's the same sort of thing as a, a mug or a cup. Um, that you drink your coffee or your tea, uh, or any other, you know, substance. It's like a Coke can. I mean, we could say that the, you know, can of Coca-Cola is a drug delivery device because it's a can that allows you to drink drugs like caffeine and sugar and all the rest of it that they've got in there out of a can. So that's a drug delivery device. What they're going to do, turn that and then only sell cans of Coke from a chemist or a pharmacist. <sighs> Okay, you know, you want a can of Red Bull, you're going to have to only buy that from Boots Chemists or, you know, a pharmacy or something like that. You know, never going to be able to do it. Same as alcohol, well, you're going to ban, you know, the, the, the container that comes in because it's a drug delivery device. No. Uh, so, yeah, I don't agree with using this terminology of a drug de delivery device on something that really isn't a syringe or it isn't an intravenous drip or it isn't, you know, something stupid like that. Um, it's a device that allows you to consume, you know, chemicals very much like a can of Coke. Anyway, not to ponder on that too much. Uh, as in the sense of the cigarette high, oh, obviously there's all these other chemicals or whatever that you've got in there. So, you know, the, the, I think the consumer needs to have the choice. He can choose what he wants to do. That's what they've done with tobacco products. The consumer, when he's in the shop, newsagent, supermarket, whatever, he can choose. He can choose to either smoke or he can choose not to smoke. It is the consumer's choice. And that's the way that the government has certainly played it here in the UK, and I think they've played it like that in America and all the other states around uh, the globe. Even in some places like uh, Holland, they've given the choice of marijuana to the public so that, you know, the public can basically choose, ah, well, we want to get stoned or we don't want to get stoned or whatever the case may be. They give them the choice. We haven't got that particular choice here in the UK and obviously as I say in, in, in certain states, many states in America, they're still, they're still, they haven't got that choice, they're not allowed to smoke marijuana, banned completely. Uh, I don't know how they did that, what did they do, turn around and say marijuana is a, the actual leaf is a drug delivery device, uh, I don't know. <laughs> but nevertheless, the, you know, the point being here is that, um, it, you know, it's the choice of the user. Now, nicotine inside an electronic cigarette. At the moment, that seems to be a big thing because we do have tremendously large amount of smokers. I'm a you know smoker for 20 years, and so I've moved over this about three weeks. You know, a bit more than just probably just a bit more than three weeks I've been on it, um, and it's 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 assisting me. I must admit because obviously I'm getting the nicotine in there, so therefore I I I can pretty much just flick over to using this. But this is and can be used as a nicotine-free product, so. Again, it gives a consumer the choice between cigarettes that completely, totally kill you, uh, a dire slow death, leaves you to a very painful suffering death, or you can choose not to do anything at all. There is that choice as well. Um, or you can, you know, you, you can even choose alcohol, which is another thing. Or kill yourself by sweets, you know, um, sweets, you know, all the confectionery items or whatever are also you know, quite you know, heavy carcinogens, they have a lot in them as well. And they also have, you know, tax and revenue on them because of that. Uh, so you've got alcohol, cigarettes, sweets, chocolates, all the rest of these things. And this is a new 21st century device that is able to deliver the similar pleasures in a different way. 
Um, hopefully, in like the new generations that are coming up or whatever, when they ch if they want to choose to do this, they will be getting nicotine free. They won't be having addictions, you know, to this, so they can have devices. They can enjoy the pleasures of strawberry, rhubarb, cinnamon, you know, all these concocted crazy flavors and this, that, and the other through the you know the vaping technology, as as one would put it as a technology that, you know, could be put on the shelf alongside cigarettes, alcohol, confectionaries, you know, everything from sweets to licorice to chewing gum to, you know, everything like this. Um, and I think this, should, this, this, this is pretty certainly one to go into those categories. Um, but it's not, it's to say, it's not going to give you that cigarette high. So anybody who, you know, thinks, you know, oh, hey, you know, cigarettes, direct replacement. It's not, because obviously, as I say, with a cigarette, it's got all the toxins in it. I mean, Christ, you know, ammonia, you know, formaldehyde, benzene, you know, I mean, Jesus, you want to sit there sniffing petrol and, and stuff, you know, I mean, I've been known as a petrol head and it's never really bothered me, um, you know, working on the bikes and things, but it's certainly not good. It's a brain damage agent. It does make you feel high. I know that to say, you know, um, standing around with, you know, high octane fuels and exhaust fumes and things like this. It does make you feel queasy, and it gives you the same high, but in which like a cigarette does in the morning. So when you're thinking, where's that high coming from? People are saying oh, that they're relating it to nicotine. I really don't think it is. It's, I don't think it's the nicotine that's giving you the high. It's the poisonous materials, the carbon monoxide, the benzene, the formaldehydes. I mean, the, the, the carbon monoxide uh, and sulfur dioxides and things like this, they come straight out the back end of an exhaust of a car. They come straight out the back end of the exhaust of a motorcycle. Any combustion uh, of sorts, you're going to get those, those, those chemicals. And those chemicals also make you feel high. But strangely enough, relative to the same way it makes you feel when you're smoking a cigarette. So, people want that cigarette high. You're only going to get that with a cigarette because that's it. Unless you actually want to go and take a big deep breath in on the back end of an exhaust of a car. Uh, or even a straight through pipe. You know, a non-catalytic converted vehicle. One of the older, you know, 19 sort of, you know, during the 80s, 70s, 60s car. Without cats. By all means, go and... Take a deep breath in from the exhaust fumes on there, because I tell you, it's going to give you the it's going to give the high. You know, you don't have to smoke a cigarette to get that high. I suppose you could get it from the back of an exhaust. Mm, go ahead, but uh, I I can do without the high, to be honest with you. In in all fairness, um, I'm quite happy to um, enjoy the pleasures um, or everything that was good about smoking a normal cigarette, and now able to do it without all of that formaldehyde and, you know, ammonias and carbon monoxide. I can now do that and enjoy great pleasure, much like having a good beer, um, drinking a nice beer and, and enjoying that. I can now enjoy exactly the same thing with an electronic cigarette. Um, so the idea of a drug delivery device and your cigarette highs... Hmm. Interesting one, isn't it? Something to think about, nevertheless. But, um, yeah. It's uh, it's certainly a good one. We're on about kids starting smoking. Well, I don't know. Put it on the shelf. 18 onlys. Sit next to the cigarettes. I actually think a lot more people would choose this than they would uh, formaldehyde kind of strange killer thing. But nicotine free products I don't know I don't know I don't know it's um it's an interesting one to think about I guess but um, still nevertheless that's what I think about the e-cigarette high that's what this video was about even though we've covered some other objects but still nevertheless thanks for listening my good youtubers take it easy and I shall speak to you again soon bye bye